Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So without wasting our time, let's we start. Uh, let's we start our today's chapter. Today I am going to explain about. Uh, today I am going to start the chapter real numbers from tenth class. Especially in this chapter, I am going to deal the topics. The first topic is Euclid's division lemma, and the second topic is Euclid's division algorithm. So, using Euclid's division algorithm, we are going to find the HCF of two given positive integers. So, these are the two topics I am going to cover in this part. Okay. So, let us start the first topic, Euclid's division lemma. Okay. Euclid's division lemma. Before going to the statement of Euclid's division lemma, let me tell you what is a lemma because it's a new word. Lemma means it is a proven statement. Lemma means it is a proven statement. The statement which is already proved, it is called a lemma because it can be used to prove another statements. That means we can understand that lemma means it is a helping theorem. It's like a helping theorem or it's an auxiliary. Theorem which is used to prove the further theorems, another theorems. So that is meant by lemma. So I hope you understood what is lemma. Okay, and then Euclid. Here, what is Euclid? So it is the name of a, a famous mathematician. You know, uh, you know him very well. So already in the ninth class, we learned about him in the chapter Elements of Geometry. The book Elements is written by Euclid. He is also considered as Father of geometry. So Euclid, he was a famous mathematician. You know about him. Uh, I, uh, uh, I do not tell. Uh, it is not required to tell so much about him. And of course, here another word division. About division, you know. So nothing to tell. Right. Let us see the statement. Euclid's division lemma. So what is Euclid's division lemma? For any two positive integers, let's see the statement. For any two positive integers, a comma b, there exist two unique integers q and r satisfying the equation a is equal to b into q plus r, where zero less than or equal to r less than b. So this is this statement is called as Euclid's division lemma. I think uh, you did not understand the statement Euclid's division lemma. So to understand the uh, statement uh, Euclid's division lemma, so let us see one example. Let us see one example. So here you see the statement for any two positive integers. Positive integers. Positive integers. Positive integers means what? Positive integers are nothing but natural numbers. Like one, two, three, four. Natural number starts from one, two, three, four, and so on. So, for any two positive integers means we have to select two positive integers. We have to choose two positive integers. Let us take two positive integers, seven and two. So here in the statement, the two positive integers are a and b, and a greater than b. So here I have chosen the two positive integers as seven and two. So <coughs> what did they tell in the statement for two positive integers a comma b? There exist two unique integers q and r. Satisfying this equation, let us find. So, what are the two unique integers satisfying the given equation in the case of seven and two? So, you know that it is a division lemma. It is a division lemma. So, we have to do the division here. We have to do the division here. So, while doing the division, let us start with larger number. Let us take the larger number as dividend and the smaller number as divisor. Let us take the larger number as divided and the smaller number as divisor. Let's do the division. So two ones are two, two twos are four, two threes are six, two fours are eight. So eight uh, is more than seven. We cannot take. So let's see. Two threes are six. Seven minus six one. Seven minus six is equal to one. Observe in this division. So here we got uh, three as quotient. We got three as quotient and one is called the remainder. You know. So we got three as quotient and one as the remainder. What is two? You know that it is called a divisor. And what is seven? You know that it is divided. It is divided. So in the division of seven by two, we got a quotient three and a remainder one. Do you think that? Do you think that is there any chance of getting other quotient? 
other than 3 in this division of 7 by 2. Do you think that uh, will you get 4 or 2 or 1 or any other number? Absolutely no. So it is a unique quotient. In any division, in any division, okay, definitely you will get a unique quotient. And the remainder is also unique. There is a no, there is no chance of getting 0 or 2 or something else. Okay, so that is why, so in the statement, uh, for any two positive integers a comma b, there exist two unique integers q and r. So initially we took the two integers 7 and the 2 and we divided. So we got two new integers, we got two new integers q and r, that is the quotient and reminder. Quotient and reminder. Satisfying this equation. What is this equation and how does it come? What is this equation? How does it comes? Let us see. So, this equation already in the lower classes you learned the division factor, division algorithm. So, you see this number divided 7. How do you get this divided? So, what is the relation among divided, divisor, quotient and reminder? So, here we have 4 different terms, 4 different words. What is the relation among these 4? Divided, divisor, quotient and reminder. See here. In the division 2, 3 is a 6. That means we multiplied 2 and 3. We multiplied 2 and 3. That is divisor and quotient are multiplied. Divisor and quotient are multiplied. What is the product you get? 6 will be the product. 2, 3 is a 6. For this 6, if you add the remainder 1, what you will get? 2, 3 is a 6. 6 plus 1, 7. That is what is the 7 here? Divided. That means if you multiply divisor and quotient and if you add the remainder to this product, you are getting divided. That means dividend is equal to, yes, 7 is the dividend in this. Dividend is equal to 2 is what? Divisor. So 2 is the divisor. Dividend is equal to divisor into quotient. 3 is the quotient plus reminder. So if you take two positive integers 7 and 2, there exist two more integers, two unique integers 3 and 1 satisfying the equation 7 is equal to 2 into 3 plus 1. In similar way, you see here in the statement, we don't have the numbers like 7 and 2. We have two variables A and B. These are the two positive integers that we took. So in any division, suppose A is a larger number and B is a smaller number because we mentioned the condition that A is greater than B. So if A is the divider and B is the divisor, if you divide A by B, you will get some quotient now, definitely you will get some quotient and I already mentioned that the quotient is unique. Suppose that quotient is Q and you will get some reminder also. Definitely you will get some reminder. So what is that reminder? Uh, already I told the reminder also you will get unique reminder in any division. So let the reminder is R. If, as, if you assume the quotient and reminder in the division of A by B as Q and R, so, and if you apply this uh, division fact or division algorithm, which we already learned in our lower classes, to these four variables, what we will get here? Dividend is equal to A. What is divided? Dividend is equal to A. And what is the divisor? Divisor is equal to B. And what is the quotient? Quotient is Q. And the reminder is R. So, dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder. Divided is equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder. So here you see the equation A is equal to BQ plus R. How do you get this equation? So if you take two positive integers A and B, there exist two unique integers quotient and reminder Q and R satisfying this equation A is equal to B into Q plus R. Now I hope you understood the concept little. Okay, here one more condition is we have 0 less than or equal to R less than B. 0 less than or equal to R less than B. What is this condition? R means what? Reminder. R means what here? In this division, what is R? Reminder. What is reminder? And what is this value? Between what values does it lie? Already you know very well. Okay, again I will remind you. Reminder, so in any division, Definitely, the remainder is always less than the divisor. In any division, the remainder is always less than the divisor. So, in this division of A by B, what is the divisor? B is the divisor. Then definitely, the remainder should be less than the divisor. Sorry, 
not less than or equal to absolutely or less than b so definitely the remainder is always less than b the remainder is always less than b and the remainder it may, it may be equal to 0 it may be equal to 0 or greater than 0 also it may be equal to 0 or greater than 0 so the remainder is equal to remainder may be greater than or equal to 0 and it is always less than the divisor so from these two if you add these two equations if you Combine these two equations and write, then you will get 0 less than or equal to R less than B. This condition will get. That means the remainder always lies between 0 and divisor. Uh, it may be equal to 0 also. So let us understand this uh, with some more examples. So I will show you some examples. Suppose you take 2. Uh, let us... Uh, take the division of any number by 2, let us take 2, divide 4 by 2, what will get? 2 to the 4, the remainder is 0. And let us divide 6 by 2, oh, sorry, 5 by 2, next 4, next number 5, let us divide it by 2, what will get? 2 to the 4, the remainder is 1. Next, if you continue, so if you divide 6 by 2, then we will get 2, 3, just 6, the remainder is 0. That means what do you observe here? In the division of any number by 2, what remainders you are, you are getting? 0, 1, 0. If you do the divisions, division of 7 by 2, you will get 1 next, then 0, 1, 0, 1. So here 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 are repeating. So you are getting these two remainders only 0 1 0 1 0 1 are repeated again and again that is you are getting remainder so what is the division in this division what is the divisor divisor is equal to 2 divisor is equal to 2 when the divisor is equal to 2 what are the possible remainders what are the possible remainders the possible remainders are 0 and 1 what do you understand from these so when the divisor is 2, the remainders are always less than the divisor. Here 1 is less than 2 and 0 is less than 2. Okay. And also remainder may be equal to 0. Remainder may be equal to 0 and more than 0 but always less than the divisor. So, so another example, you see another example. So let us uh, take the division of any number by 3. So take 6 and divide 3 to the 6, remainder is 0. Next 6, next number 7, you divide it by 3, 3 to the 6, remainder will get 1. And next number is 8, let us divide it by 3, 3 to the 6, the remainder is 2. And next number is 9, and divide it by 3, 3, 3 to the 9, the remainder is 0. So you can see 0, 1, 2, again 0 came. So if you divide next number 10 by 3, what will you get? Definitely you will get 1. And then... If you divide 11 by 3, then you will get remainder 2. That means you can see a pattern here. So the remainders are coming 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So repeatedly these remainders will come. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. That means other than these three remainders, 0, 1, 2, you don't get any other remainder. So when the divisor is 3 here, when the divisor is 3, what are the possible remainders? The possible remainders, the remainder starts from 0, okay, and it is more than 0, but always less than the divisor. You see 0, 1, 2 we got, but we are not getting 3, 4, because the divisor is 3. So if the divisor is 3, so the possible remainders are 0, 1, 2. So now you can write, if the divisor is 4, if the divisor is 4, what will be the remainders? Now you may expect, definitely the remainders may come 0, 1, 2 or 3. So I hope you understand. So these conditions, this is possible remainder, so R. So divisor means what? B. Remainder means what? R. So from this you see, definitely 2 is greater than these numbers, 3 is greater than these numbers, 4 is greater than, divisor is greater than the remainder or remainder is always less than the divisor. So you will get this equation, remainder is less than divisor and also you see from these you observe this 0 1 0 1 2 0 that means remainder starting remainder may be 0 and it may be more than 0 so that is r is greater than or equal to 0 
So if you combine these two inequations, we will get this condition 0 less than or equal to r less than b. So this is the Euclid's division lemma. So now once again let us see what is the statement. So for any two positive integers a comma b, there exist two unique integers quotient and remainder q and r satisfying the equation a is equal to b into q plus r a is equal to b into q plus r. So, how do you get this equation by using the division fact? Already you know, dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder. Okay, and what, is, what I have written here, 0 less than or equal to r less than b means it is a remainder. So, I am writing here that the remainder lies between 0. It may be equal to 0 or it may be more than 0, but always less than the divisor. That is, I am telling in this inequation. So, this is the division, Euclid's division lemma.